about Mabel's place. Hmm? Mabel, the newspaper man, too? Oh, Mabel. No, she's a sort of a, well, she's kind of a friend to all the boys. Uh, <coughs> how long did you see them? Oh, about uh, five years. If I hadn't gone back to the paper after the war, I suppose I'd be a well man by now. Ow! Now take it easy, will you? You go right back with Mabel and the boys. I'll tell you when I'm through with this. Ow! <laughs> oh, say, for a sweet-looking somebody, you can cause more. Go away, will you? Take it easy, let me alone. Holding hands with pretty nurses. <laughs> ah! Do you have to do that? Will you, will you go away and leave me alone? What a pal. <coughs> Come on, roll over. <coughs> Say, can't you heat that stuff? No, and the masseuse is busy, and I'm afraid we have no cream puffs for lunch. James Lewis McFarland, sir. Now, how about McFarland? How long has he been here? About three years, sir. Hmm. A hopeless case, I guess. Scar tissue on lung, mustard gas, very stubborn. Won't respond to treatment. I'd say he'd have about six months, perhaps a year. Now, we need his place for a man who may come in here and make a recovery, if he had McFarland's chance. Send him to Camp Kearney. <coughs> you didn't want me to hear that, did you? Look here, you'll crack that other lung if you don't watch your step. Now lie back there. Look all right. You're about as sick as a, a horse. <laughs> so it's Kenny and a handful of clouds, eh? Look. What would you do if you only had six months to live? Me? Mm -hmm. Well, first I'd go and see all my relatives. I haven't any. And then I'd, I'd pick out my own plot with a beautiful headstone, you know, with with dove and a lovely tear line stone so on. Beautiful thought. And then I get plastered. And I mean good and tight. And I'd stay that way. And I'd round up a flock of good time Charlie. And I'd raise so much cane getting into scrapes, they'd have to pick me up with a bronner. <laughs> well, I'll be a son of a gun. Say, look at here. Look at. How long has this been bottled up in you? Oh, my goodness. I guess I didn't mean that. <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> well, it's a swell idea. I I'm going to round up my gang of good time Charlies and, and go on a buster that'll make all newspaper men green with envy. Gangway for a man in a hurry. Scram, you you can't be in a list and keep your job. Yeah, go on. But you're confined to quarters. Don't do anything rash. Oh, no, I won't. Don't worry. Go on. We'll beat it, beat it. <laughs> well, drink one for me and... And make it a big one. Okay, pal. Good luck, soldier. <laughs> hey, where'd you get that outfit? Want to fight the war over again? I down. I found it upstairs in the, in the trunk. Oh, boy, did I clean up on Hanson. And with his own dice, too. <laughs> Two dollars. Baseball tickets, his pipe, and Fifi's garden. After three years, it comes back to Papa. And was he burned up? <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> That's the two bucks you owe me. Where are you going? To pieces.
Thanks. I just about decided that my technique must be failing. They must have thought you were selling something. That seems to be the only reason anyone wears an overseas cap these days. Huh? Oh, oh yes, the cap. Well, even old soldiers have to eat. How long ago did you leave that hospital back there? Hospital? Uh -huh, there's a distinct odor of a hospital about you. You're right, lady. Anyone ever tell you about your eyes? Oh, but they must have. They're blue, aren't they? Your eyes, I mean. Did you say something about your technique failing, Mr... Uh, Mr... Uh... Uh, McFarlane. James Lewis McFarlane, ex-newspaper man, more recently, Rehabilitation Hospital Number 59, as you guessed. Free white and 36, but just Jim to you, Miss... Uh, miss... You going to the city? Chicago. But isn't that about 2,000 miles away? Ha <laughs> ha, lady. I'm on my way for one wild, hilarious, 100% bust. What did you say your name was? I didn't say. That's right, you didn't. Hungry? Rather. Let me see. Three dollars and sixty seventy two. Ten more miles than we eat. Say, listen, I used to know the smallest little joint down the road down here where you got everything from soup to nuts for the colossal sum of forty cents. What do you say? After all, I got. All right. You always stick to the highway. Mine turns off here. Oh. Goodbye. Good luck. Hey, wait a minute. Well, do you or don't you, soldier? Hmm? Oh. Hey, listen, if you're coming with me, come on, I've got to. Say, mister, where does that road lead to? The Peaceful Bay, down by the ocean. Peaceful Bay, peace, pieces. Say, are you coming with me? I... Gee, she had pretty eyes. Don't sound like a very good detour, but I think I'll take it. How long has Mrs. Cameron been away? I don't know, but Mr. Hicks at the grocery said she'd be back tonight or tomorrow. Thanks. You're welcome. I can bite you and make newspaper history, don't you? What do you 
Can you help me into the house? Yeah, sure. I guess <coughs> my heart. I guess I've been overdoing it. Don't you worry, old timer. We'll get you inside. I'm a little trouble myself. Where's the, the aromatic spirit of ammonia? In the kitchen. I'll get it. I got it. Had enough of this darn stuff to smell it a mile off. Say, hey, you're in a bad way. Who's your doctor? Dr. Grayson. But you don't get that old saw bones around here. You don't want to send me I know. Way. Listen, old timer. Doctors are a pain in the neck to me, too, see? Where's the phone? Over on the desk. Hello, say, give me uh, Dr. Grayson. I, I don't know what his phone number is. <coughs> Gotta hurry. Serious this time, Michael. We've got to get you to a hospital and quickly. Oh, you're crazy. What did I tell you? This old buzzer been trying to rail over one of those things for the last ten years. But, Michael, I... But my bees, who's going to take care of them for me? Well, how about your neighbor, Mrs. Cameron? Margaret? Marvelous, all right, to cook and to take care of a poor old fool like me, too good, but, but my bees and my garden, they're a man's job. Besides, Margaret's going to the city for a few days. Hospital, beds, invalids. Oh. Yeah. Say, listen, hospitals aren't as bad as you think they are. No, honest, they're, they're great. I ought to know. I've been in dozens of them from one end of the country to the other. The doc here is right. Sure he is. You've got to give yourself a break. You know, take it easy for a while in a hospital where they know what it's all about. But my bees, my God, they're living, breathing things. They're people. My friends. They can't be neglected for even a few well, days. Well, a few days is, is better than well, you know, maybe for good. Come on, soldier. Give them a break, too. You know, fix it up so you can come back in good shape. Could you? Would you mind some staying here for a few days and kind of taking care of things for me? Me? Gee, gosh, I don't know any more about bees than I do about buzzards. Well, the kind in the wing, I mean. Well, my old partner will turn up to help you. And Margaret Cameron, she'll come over here to take care of you. You see, you're a friend. There's everything here that you need. Move in. Make yourself at home. 116K. You know, as one soldier to another. Dr. Grayson speaking. Send an ambulance out to the B-Master. You know where it is. Will you stay? Will you? 
Yeah, sure. I'll stick around for a couple of days till your partner shows up. That long trip I had him in. Well, I made one little detour. A couple of days more or less won't spoil my parade. Oh, fine. <laughs> fine. And the leaf cutter bees, or megachile, which differ from Andrena and Halictus, and agree with Osmia, Apus and Bombus, in having a uh, elongate tongue. Well, I'm glad somebody agrees with them. Sladen states, <laughs> Sladen must be another bee nut, that the queen, belonging to the virginal form of Bombus terrestris, often invades a nest belonging to the Lucum form, kills the rightful queen. <laughs> nice company we're keeping. Takes over the nest, drives out all the... And I'm the lad who was going to have one last claim. Look at me. Oh, baby. If you could only cook. I'm as hungry as a horse. Better in English as we can read. Well, what do you know? A radio. <laughs> What'll it be? Amos Nandy or a Bing Crosby? And now, my dear little kitty, the first thing you must learn is there are 4,500 different kinds of bees. And, furthermore, I don't blame you. kind of a pal, you'd hightail it out of here and round up that fellow that helps the bee master. Well, if I got to do it, I got to do it. Taking no chances, though. my boy. I'm merely trying to convince the bees of my peaceful intentions. Well, how did you get here in the bee master's garden? Well, son, it's a long story. Well, I won't bother you with the details. The old bee master asked me to stick around for a few days and kind of keep my eye on things until there's old partner showed up to take the job off my hands. Maybe you can give me a line on the old fella. Sure, only he's not so old. Scoutmaster, General of the Peaceful Bay Troopers, Chief of the Robber's Den, and the Bee Master's first assistant. Because there isn't anything the Bee Master knows about the bees that he hasn't taught him. In other words, him is me. What well, the... Oh, so it's a man's job, huh? You're a child, a baby. I'm not a baby. I'm ten. The bee master calls me little cow. Oh. What are you groaning about? Don't you know that this is the cleanest place in the whole wide world? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. I bet it's just about cracked the bee master to pieces when they took him away. Mr. Hicks down the grocery store told me. Was he? Awful sick. Go on, tell me, because cause I can take it. The bee master says you can stay and tend his bees in his garden. You've got to come clean on everything. The bee master never held out on me. And neither will I, son. He was the sickest man I ever saw, and the gamest one, too. 
And fella, I've seen a lot of them. Oh, no. Come on. He's not going to die. No, no, of course not. Especially not if we give him something to not worry about, you know. Look, I tell you what. You could quite a job on your hands around here, but you don't know it showing me the ropes all around here. I'm I'm just a greenhorn. Well, son, the rope is good enough for the bee master. You're okay for me. Put her there, partner. There. Oh. Oh. Say, what's your name? Oh, James. Jim McFarland. You ought to know that there's 4,500 different kind of bees. Come on, I'll show them to you. I was afraid of that. Come on. Don't be afraid. Those guys will hurt you. I'm not so sure. I heard the same thing once about a mad dog. Don't hit him. You'll make him sore. And then they will get mad. Say, uh, look, couldn't we postpone this until tomorrow? What is this about? You're going to make me smoke him down like a sissy? Huh? Well, well, no. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, what are you doing? Drop that thing. Put it down. I want to show you three kinds of bees. Here, hold out your hand. Oh, no, you don't. Not me. <laughs> Whistle, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
Boy, sure does the trick, huh? You betcha. As the V-Master says, this is a little outfit compared with the big ones they had in the bathroom. And, uh, what's, uh, what's this stuff? Beeswax. Beeswax? Good heavens, what do we do with that? You mean that goo that you buy down on when they take an impression? Sure. And a million other things. Boy, <laughs> from the table to the dentist chair. Say, this is quite a business, isn't it, huh? I told you you'd get a kick out of it. I never dreamed it was like this. Well, let's go outside, huh? Okay, come on. Say, why are there so many blue flowers here in the garden? Because the V-Master says blue's are perfect colors. Oh. So it is. Here, have a tomato. Thank you. And because the bees are the most perfect of any insect in the way they live, blue would be the color they love best. Uh-huh. Say, so listen, Scout, you seem to know everything that's going on around here. Maybe you can give me a line on a girl. That soft, fluffy hair, blue eyes. Hey, wait a minute. You aren't the kind of fellow that likes the girls, are you? Well, not exactly. Oh, no, no, of course not. Well, then why do you ask such silly questions? Go on, eat your tomato. This common sense are good for what ails you. Yes, sir. I gotta be getting home. Well, so long, pal. See you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. that's going to pieces for at least another night. Good for what ails you. Mm. Not bad. Neither is that. I wouldn't do no fretting, Mrs. Cameron. Just because you didn't locate your daughter in the city doesn't mean she won't come back home. I can't understand the girls nowadays. Maybe that's why Lucy ran away. Maybe it was me. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Hicks, for the ride. it have been a long walk from the bus line. I'm glad to see you. Goodbye. Bye, Mrs. Cameron. I wish I could understand it, but I don't. Why? Why aren't there enough positions here in the city for school teachers without going way up north, so far from home? I don't know. Is it, is it my fault? Tell me. There isn't anything a mother wouldn't understand. I don't know. I, I can't tell you. I, I can't explain it myself. But don't you see, oh, please, please? Please, let's not talk about it anymore tonight. I... But dear... Sardines and crackers. Well, no. Come on. Mighty slim rations for a hungry man. 
Oh, what's the use of complaining? It would be a lot worse. Come on, let's go outside and get ourselves some fresh air, huh? Come on. <laughs> Say, looks like Mrs. Cameron's home. That's great. That means that tomorrow we start eating regularly. Ah, hope she shows up early. Come on, boy. Just about now, the boys are heading for Tony's and the big feed. <laughs> and then the press club. Yeah, and here I am, 2,000 miles away, playing nursemaid to a flock of thieves. <laughs> Come on, we go for a walk. Come on. I'm seeing things. It isn't. It is. Where? Why are you here? Is it because your eyes are blue? And don't you know that the blue is the most perfect color in the whole world? Oh, no, you don't. I didn't key to a seven miles just in order to. Wait a minute. What's on your mind? Uh, what's so important that it can't be fixed? Please, please go away. Oh, lady, you might not know it, but uh, you're talking to Jimmy McFarlane. The best little fixer-upper in the whole world. Why, he can fix anything. Anything. <laughs> anything, of course, but... You should see what those tears are doing to your eyes. That's better. <coughs> now, just settle back and tell me the whole thing. All right. You asked for it. I'll tell you what I want. What's needed desperately. A marriage certificate and a wedding ring. Marriage certificate and a wedding? Look, <coughs> do you mind going back and starting in all over again? Wait a minute. You're really on the level, aren't you? Stopped, aren't you, Mr. Fix-It? No. No, I'm not stopped. Just slowed down a bit. Yeah, but I can fix that, too. You don't mind being a widow in six months? Maybe sooner. A widow? I, I don't understand. Don't you know who I am? I'm the wreck of the Hesperus. When you picked me up the other day, I was, I was going to piece it. Yeah, Priscilla gave me the idea. Uh, she was a nurse at the government hospital where they finally convinced me that I'd wasted a lot of time trying to ungas a pair of bad lungs. So here I am. <coughs> Slightly used, but at your service. What do you want me to do? You mean that you actually marry me? What, what, uh... Why do you think that would be such an ordeal? But I... Well, haven't we... I just unloaded a lot of good reasons? What are we waiting for? Will you promise 
on your honor that you'll marry me without even knowing who I am, and that you'll never try to find me again afterwards? On my honor, if that's what you want. And you'll meet me early in the morning, say, 9 o'clock at the marriage license bureau in the city. Did you ever see such pretty blue eyes? A fine looking bridegroom I'll make. Say, if I lost my mind completely? Well, I can always press the pants and maybe the other fellow's got a white shirt and a, and a nod coat. Never look. Good morning. You're, um, you're late for your wedding, Miss, uh, Miss. Go on. Just a minute. I'd rather you let me pay all the expenses. What kind of an egg do you think I am? But you're broke. It cost two dollars for the license and something for the judge. You only had three dollars. This is as much my wedding as it is yours. If I remember correctly, a fellow usually manages to pay for his own wedding. Well, I've managed. That watch never kept time anyhow. Um, come on. Come, Patches. I don't know, Emily. Maybe we better think this thing over. Oh, Horace, after ten years? It'll all be over in a minute. That's what the dentist said. We'd like an application, if you please. Promise. All right. But remember, young lady, when I stand up in the judge's chamber down the hall and marry you, this is going to look like the real thing. I don't get married every day in the week, and I want all the trimmings. Oh, yeah. When a fellow needs a friend. Do you, James, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. Do you, uh... Louise, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. Have you got the ring? Y yes. Uh, 
All right, I'll get it out. It's a Woolworth special. I had to keep out five dollars for his nibs. I'm sorry. As a judge of the Supreme Court of Mandan County, and by the law of the state, I pronounce you husband and wife. Was that a Woolworth special too? No. That was a genuine McFarlane. You've been very fine about the whole thing. And, well, I hope you're wrong about that six months. And there's a long and happy life in store for you. Honest, I do. Thanks. But don't you worry about me. Taxi. Where shall I tell him? Go ahead, driver. I'll direct you later. You should require any further services, Mrs. McFarlane. You can always reach me care of the Bee Master, Peaceful Bay. The Bee Master? Yeah, sure, now, a fellow who raises bees. Get back in ranks. Is it all right with you, General? Sure. I mean, yes, sir. Go ahead. All right, then. The first thing I want to talk about is this gun. As I came along, I saw you kids pushing and pulling. That's no way to handle a gun. Oh, when I was in the Army, <coughs> we used to give it this. And this. And end up with this. Let that be warning to you kids about firearms. Who does this gun belong to? Found it. Well, I'll take it and keep it until the owner comes for it. Okay. Attention! The last one to the rocks is assisting. who gives bees water <laughs> and crawls around on his stomach as if he were eating worms. <laughs> <laughs> or, or playing duck. I know, but the little scout's been talking about me. And about the bee master, too. There's one of the fine old characters that we need more of in this mad old world of ours. Yeah. Yeah, he's a great old timer. I'm sorry I wasn't here. You see... I have to take care of him. He won't take care of himself. The man always doing for others as he is. But I've been having a little trouble of my own. What's the matter? Are you ill? Hmm? Oh, no. Nothing. I had to go to the city this morning and I guess, oh, I guess the sun kind of got me walking back from the bus. Never you mind that. We'll fix that. Here. You try this orange juice. It'll taste good. Thanks. The walk back from that bus line is awful. I guess the bee master's slipper will fit you. Oh, 
please, I can manage. You drink that orange juice. Good gracious, where'd you get a sock like that? Well, it really wasn't like that when I got it. The bee master said I might borrow some of his. But... I'll give you a pair after lunch. I meant it for a few days before I went to town. You must be dumb. <laughs> yes, I am. Priscilla always said I was trying to eat my way out of the hospital. Hospital? Are you in a hospital? Uh-huh. Government. Oh. Yeah, they finally told me that I was licked. I had about six months or so to go, so... So I walked out of them. Took French leave. Just like that. And right you were. Those city doctors with a newfangled idea. They don't know what it's all about. You know they told the bee master that same thing 30 years ago. Six months. Fiddlesticks. Wait till you get some of this fine sea air into your lungs. Of course, that orange juice is better for you than all the pills and murderous concoctions they've been giving you. But boy, if you want to live, and you have faith in him and his power, that's the only anchor that will keep you here. Uh, are you serious? Of course I'm serious. And I know what I'm talking about. You take the Bee Masters program, and in six months, you will be the liveliest looking corpse you ever saw. Maybe, maybe that's what he thought, too, when he wished this goofy bee job on me. Gee, this chicken is swell. I feel better already. Ooh, hospitals give me the creeps. Gee, I wish that lady would hurry. I haven't seen him for two whole months. I bet he'd be tickled. You may come in now. Thanks. We all miss you like everything. Yes. And I miss you, too. But it won't be long now, little partner. You'll come home soon? Yes. Yes. Very soon. Gosh, won't that be keen, Jamie? And where you get an eyeful? Next to you, there isn't anyone in the whole wide world can handle the garden and the bees, and even the black Germans, like Jamie. Yes, Jamie's good. He's been very, very kind. He makes me glad to come home. Oh, gosh, I almost forgot. Look, these tries on that, a double-decker of hot dogs, the way you like them. Oh. Nurse, nurse, that's my lunch. And don't you forget it. I certainly won't. Jamie, maybe we better go. Yeah. Getting kind of tired. We'll come back again oh. soon, huh? Yes. Yes, come tomorrow. Victory is just over the top, my friend. You'll see. Yes. I'm beginning to feel it already. Goodbye. Goodbye, soldier. Gee, I wish it was tomorrow. I can't do it. I, I can't accept it. I, I haven't earned it. I'm sure the Bee Master's will shows that he's a better judge of that than you. Now, I can appreciate his, his leaving a share. For that matter, maybe all of his money as well as this place to Little Scout, but gosh, half to me. It, it isn't... Jamie, you must accept it. But, Margaret, it, it isn't fair. It, it isn't right. Look at me, Jamie. The bee master never did anything that wasn't right. He was happy in the thought that he was entrusting the things he loved most into capable, honest hands. Don't you see? It was his service to them that helped to prolong his life. And he knew he'd do the same for you. And it's doing it. J. 
James Lewis McFarland and Jean Marie Meredith. I knew that Little Scout was a girl all the time. She must have gotten a great kick out of thinking that she was fooling me. <laughs> Your idea of being something as a scoutmaster or a general. Is that mm -hmm. it? Hmm? Mm -hmm. And climbing trees and drilling and playing baseball. Oh, but listen, Punk, you don't have to run around with a pack of boys to do that. No, we'll find you a girls' camp where they're doing all the stunts that boys are doing. A girls' camp? Sure. Oh, gee, gee, that's swell. Oh, you're kidding. No, honest. Cross my heart. And say, listen, with a head start that you got on him and all the stuff that you know, little wise acre, why, you ought to be a scout mistress. Just like that. Oh, that's keen. <sighs> Something's happened, Jamie. Yeah. Got some bad news for you. I want you to take it like a soldier. A bee master. Yeah. Tension. Head up. Chin in. Eyes straight to the front. <laughs> dead. Steady, soldier. We've got to carry on for him because he's left his bees and the bee garden to us. There, Margaret. Sit down and take a load off your feet. Oh, so I even get tomato juice a la beach. Yes, sir. I drank so much of this stuff that my skin is turning red. You don't have to bring it down here. Ah, another hour of sun won't do you any harm. You missed it yesterday. That's the first time in months. Yeah, but gee, can't a fellow cheat just once and go to a ball game? <laughs> I hear the peaceful Bay savages beat the socks off the troopers with Jean Mary rubbing it in at the end. <laughs> Well, of course. Well, they've never been the same since their general went petticoats and curls. I can imagine. Say, you know, Jamie, I do believe you've taken on another pound right there. Uh-huh. And, uh, do you remember when I thought I only had six months to live? <clears throat> yes, it's a long time ago. You know, honest, Margaret, I don't think I'd have ever stuck it out if the old bee master hadn't wished half that place up there on me. Because, well... Something happened to me out there on those rocks when I first came. Something that... I know. There's been something on your mind for a long time. I know, Jamie. If it'll make you feel any better, well, I'm listening. I met a girl the first day that I was here. I never saw her before in all my life. 
I didn't know it then, but but I fell in love with her. Oh, I know it'll all sound crazy to you, but you see, I found out that she was in some sort of a spot. I didn't know what it was. Difficulty, some sort. She needed the protection of a man's name, so I gave her mine. I married her because I thought I only had six months to live. She said, she said, thanks, you know, just like that, thanks. Walked out. I never even knew who she was. All I know is that the fellow that let her down must have been an awful cab. So you decided to get even and not to die after all. Uh, Margaret, how do you think she's going to take a double cross like that? You know, she might, she might want to get married again or something. I don't know. And, well, gosh, how am I going to go about finding her or doing something? I, I don't know. I'm afraid I can't help you because I can't help myself. Still no news about your daughter? No. Jamie, why did she run away? If I only knew that Lucy was alive, it wouldn't be so bad. It would... Uh... I know. I know. Vibration of that drum would drive all the bees to China instead of keeping them around the home hives. Go on, Jamie. I'll take care of this stuff. Okay, thanks, Margaret. known as the Bee Master at Peaceful Bay? Yes. Well, is Mr. James Lewis McFarlane there? Yes, this is Mr. McFarlane's home. May I speak to him, please? It's very urgent. I'll call him. Jamie! What do you want? Telephone! Well, find out who it is. I'm busy. You better hurry up. Oh, all right, then. I'll be up. Take this over to the plane, will you? I don't know, but someone says it's very urgent. Hurry. Oh, all right. Hello. Yes. What? Speak, speak louder, will you please? I, I can hardly hear. The baby is doing nicely. It's a boy, two weeks old. But your wife is not reacting favorably. We are seriously alarmed, Mr. McFarland. Well, where, where is she? What is it, Jamie? Shh, quiet, quiet. Yes. Yes, Dr. Hall's maternity home. Green Bay Road and, and Lexington. Yes, of, of course I'll be there. Certainly. Margaret, it's her. I found her. They, they talked as though they didn't expect her to pull through, so I've got to get there as quickly as I can. 426W. Tell him I love you to get minute. Mr. Hicks, please. Oh, Mr. Hicks, this is Mrs. Cameron. Will you lend us your car? It's very important. You will? Thank you. Yes, Doctor. He's here now. How is she? She hasn't regained consciousness, but the doctor wants it. This way, please. Dr. Carter, Mr. McFarland.
surely there must be some... Please. So you're Jim McFarland. I know we didn't hit it off together. And, and I should have told you he was coming. Please forgive me. Take the baby and, and give him a chance. I... I shan't mind going if I know you're giving him the protection he's entitled to. Provided for? Yes. A relative who made arrangements for her to come here. A cousin, Miss Molly Turner. Oh. Oh. He's such a fine little chap, Mr. McFarland. Have someone to help you with the child, Mr. McFarland? Oh, yes, yes. A, an old friend of mine, my housekeeper. Oh, Mr. McFarland, you've forgotten the baby's thing. The baby? Mr. McFarlane has just taken him home. Mr. McFarlane? You were out of the school with your class when we phoned. In this emergency, we had to find someone. We found the husband's address. All right, there. Doctor. I'll make all the necessary arrangements later. Will you call a taxi for me, please? I'll ask him to hurry. I'll be downstairs. Baby, what are you going to do with it? I don't know. Where's Margaret? Then she's Margaret's. Yes, dear.
she? She died? Oh, my poor boy. And you loved her so much. The baby. <laughs> well, isn't it cute? Isn't he a whopper? He? Sure, it's a boy. <laughs> James Lewis McFarlane Jr. Yeah. You're going to be very proud, Jamie. But we can't take care of him over here. Oh, no, I guess... No, I'll take him over to my house where I can keep an eye on the little fellow. And you here, Jean. You run along down to the drugstore and tell Mr. Cook to give you two nursing bottles, four nipples, and a quart of the best olive oil he has. taking care of babies. You're coming home with me. Molly. Molly Turner. So she did it for her cousin. The hospital notified you about Lucy by accident. Oh, little manly forgotten your belongings. I didn't intend for you to be troubled or to know. The baby, did you give it to her to keep? Yes, I did. And he's with his grandmother. But you didn't tell Aunt Margaret that the baby was Lucy. No. No, of course I didn't. I wouldn't break Margaret's heart for the world. Lucy, my little baby. My little girl. Don't you see? That's what I've been trying so desperately to keep from her. I didn't really mean to take advantage of your generosity that night down on the rocks. But well, I was desperate for Lucy's sake. I didn't know you belonged here. All of a sudden you offered a solution. Don't you see? We couldn't hurt Aunt Margaret any more than you could a little while ago. I told her everything down there on the beach. Everything, of course, except the identity of the woman that I married. And now Lucy's dead. What are we going to do? How can we ever explain it to Aunt Margaret? You don't know who I am. You've never seen me before. Tell her. Tell her. Aunt Margaret. Uh, something terrible has happened. I, I found Lucy. Oh, I don't know how to tell you. You found her dying, didn't you? Yes. Yes. In a hospital. After an automobile wreck. She died in my arms this morning. How did you know? Oh, I... I just know. I knew when she stayed away so long, something would happen. And then, this morning, I woke with a start. Because I dreamed that she'd been fatally injured. Oh, Margaret, I'm terribly sorry. I just, I just heard as I came in through the door. You sweet, Jamie. Oh, I, I forgot. You two don't know. 
know each other, do you? Mr. McFarland, this is my niece, Molly Turner. How do you do? How do you do? Why, how Margaret? Is that a baby? Yes, of course it's a baby. It's Mr. McFarland's baby. Here I am. Well, I got everything. Hello, Molly. Hello. Where's our baby? You come and see. He sure is cute. Mr. James Lewis McFarland, Jr. Big name for such a little baby, isn't it? I should say it is, but it's too much of a mouthful. Let's, let's just call him Little Jamie. All right. Here, you take the bottle and the nipples. Get a big pan of water and boil them while I rub him with oil. Okay. I hope he grows up to be a prize fighter. You know the penalty for forgery in this state? I fell in love with you that night on the rocks. And I still am. You, uh, you don't suppose you could manage to be out there again soon, do you? It might be arranged. No matter what comes to us, we must still have faith. We must always have faith. 